Come up here. Go down. <laughs> He's so stoked. Hey, go. What kind of dog is he? You can't like do a it. Dober oh my mutt? <laughs> Dober <laughs> mutt? Yeah. No idea. Hello, friends, and welcome to episode 17 of From the Van. It's a podcast from my van where I have conversations with people who have relationships with residential vehicles. And boy, do today's guests have relationships with residential vehicles. This couple is about as heavy into the van life community as anybody you're ever going to meet. Brienne and Lacey run two van life oriented companies. SD Camper Vans builds out vans. Uh, the, into stylish and comfortable homes for their clients. And the Van Life app is a map and GPS based app that helps van lifers find the things that they need for van life amenities, uh, camping spots, and each other. Um, one of the most interesting things about the Van Life app is that it, it, it aims to facilitate community in a group of people that are pretty hard to herd. Uh, we had a great conversation with them, talked a lot about um, the policy surrounding urban vehicular habitation and whatnot, as well as uh, both of their businesses. It was a good conversation. I hope that you enjoy it. Always, uh, if you feel like it, pay us a visit at From the Van on Instagram or FromTheVan.com. And I hope you enjoy the episode. We'll see you on the other side. Do you have a shop dog? Uh, no. Okay. We have in LA. We in have, LA, uh, yeah, three shop dogs. Okay. Was mm -hmm. was that water that he was drinking on the floor? In uh, there no. Oh, we, we used to have a sales. Our salesman drove brought her dog, but now she's in our uh, mobile office. Oh, okay. Yeah, and then the we have like other people have shop dogs, so the dogs just like yeah, come they just in. sort of come and go. Yeah. Cool. Fair enough. All right. Well, we're already recording, so um. Oh. Welcome to the van. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on, Brianna and Lacey. You guys are the ladies' van. <laughs> and uh, SD camper vans and the van life app. Yeah. You've got too much shit going on. It's a lot of Instagrams yeah. to track <laughs> It is a lot of Instagrams to keep track of. We barely keep track of our own. <laughs> we try. I yeah. posted today, finally. Good. Yeah. <laughs> um, where are you guys from? L.A. originally. I'm mm -hmm. from Thousand Oaks, and you're from Woodland, Woodland Hills. Hills. We met in Woodland Hills. Okay. Doing what? You guys are both ex-educators, correct? We are. Yeah, we, I was a fifth grade teacher. Okay. And she was a teacher at San Diego State. Right. But we have since moved on to help both the businesses. Okay. What were you doing in, in uh, Woodland Hills when you met? I was a... I was uh, working at Starbucks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was a barista and she was a regular. And I remember when she first walked in. That's yeah. what I met. Awesome. <laughs> That's wonderful. Very cool. I had a job in, in Woodland Hills, so I commuted from Thousand Oaks to Woodland Hills. Uh -huh. I was in the travel industry, so I worked selling cruises. Okay. Uh, and I would go there on my, my like, after work or before work, and that's how we met. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. I actually had a lot of businesses. Uh -huh. Well, I had a lot of jobs. So yeah. I was doing a lot, and I was full-time school, trying to get my teaching okay. credential. Okay, yeah. Um, Colette and I, I'm actually one of Colette's ex-customers, too. Oh, what? We met, oh, wait, she wait. was, yeah, she was bar, bartending, uh, at a brewery in Encinitas called Culture, and I yeah. was in there all the time, Heck so yeah. that's just sort of the same, same story. How long have you guys been together? About ten years. Yeah. 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 Wow. And married the same length of time, or? No. When did you get married? How long were you Five together? years. Five years? Yeah. Okay. So. When and we got engaged, it was still not legal in California. Oh, okay. For, oh, wow. um, Prop 8 had passed. Right. Um, and actually, Prop 8 passed before, I think, we started dating. Um, yeah. Which outlawed mm -hmm. gay marriage. Mm -hmm. And then, during our engagement, it was made legal again in California. Cool. That's so, awesome. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Great. Um, how long have you been in San Diego? About five years. Yeah, since so we got married and took a two-month travel around the world, backpacking trip. Hell yeah. Cool. Hostel hopping. It was so fun. And then we moved to San Diego. Mm -hmm. uh, got, a, got a place in Ocean Beach. Okay. Yeah. Right on. I, I went to grad school. Yeah, that's why we came here, for grad school for her. And then I got a teaching job right away. Okay. What um what when does the van come into play? What, how did how did that transition start to happen? Mm -hmm. You're obviously travelers. You're into being in new places and stuff, and Love that sort of is facilitated by a habitable vehicle, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, we went on a cruise for one of her cruises. For she was selling at Viking River Cruises, and that's where I found oh, the fun. joy of going from place to place without unpacking. Mm -hmm. It was awesome. Okay. So it kind of 
rolled into my dad getting a van and wanting to convert it and we were like what and this was about 2016 yeah. the end of 2016 okay so we said that sounds awesome and so we did it yeah and we hit the road for um summer because we were teachers mm -hmm. so we had two months off in summer yeah well so we, we were in that place where like we had, I had graduated from grad school and I had a good job and she had a good job and we we're like, okay, next step is to get a bigger place. Mm -hmm. So we were in that place and instead we decided, okay, let's just get a mobile house instead right. of like paying a ridiculous amount for rent in San mm -hmm. Diego. Why don't we keep our low rent and then just get an extra house? Sure. Um, and we still pay, pay less than if we had like a two bedroom apartment in San Diego. Right. Um, so we decided to do that and we called our first fan Flipper because if shit hit the fan, we could just flip it. Right. <laughs> cool. Um, did you, when you had that van, did you keep the place in Ocean Beach the whole time? We were in a new place okay. by then. So we moved out of Ocean Beach three years ago. Okay. Um, and we were in our new place. Uh, we were ready to move out of there because we'd been there for like a year and a half and usually once two years hits we're like ready to go somewhere. <laughs> sure. Um, We've moved every, consistently every two mm -hmm. years since we met each other. I do the same thing. Yeah. Yeah, yeah basically. I'm I get go. bored. Me too. I, yeah. So but what, did you keep that same place? Or? We did. Okay, that's yeah. the place that you have now. Yeah. We call it our okay. pool house. Yeah. Because it's fun. It's uh, right next to a pool. Yeah. <laughs> she was jacuzzi. saying saltwater pool and a jacuzzi. Yeah, that's, it's nice. That's Sounds epic. like the dream. It's inexpensive. Yeah. So. yeah. Um, so I think, I think I met your dad. Yeah. Uh, at Nukuyama. Both of your folks, some iteration of both of your folks, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Works at uh, SD Camper Vans, which is now doing production up in Los Angeles, right? Yeah. Yeah. So w w what's that about? Are they are they running the place? And you're sort of like head of operations remotely most of the time? How does that work? Yeah, I kind of work on, for SC Camper Friends, I work on the financials, marketing, business portion. Okay. And um, and then uh, Lori is, Lori and Alan, my in-laws, they run the shop down in LA. Uh, my dad and his girlfriend Giselle came in for a short period of time to help us with design and uh, cabinet making. Okay. Um, He's a furniture builder, I My dad was a designer at Mattel for 25 years. No shit. Cool. Yeah. Very yeah. cool. Yeah. So, and then Alan, the, uh, that my in-law, uh, her mom's husband, okay. um, who runs the shop, mm -hmm. he has had all of his expertise in electrical and, uh, Mercedes mechanic. And so all of that background. So it right. kind of worked really, really well. Okay. We actually started business. the business for him cause he lost his job at 62 oh, and no. him and my mom were like freaking out so right. but they helped us build our first fan uh -huh. so we were like let's do this this makes sense, <laughs> yeah. This yeah. Makes sense. so we flipped the couple uh -huh. and decided that we wanted to continue with building a business and now people bring us their vans and we convert them and now we're we're almost at three a month so if i want like if i want to if i want to get an sd camper van i basically go out and buy a van then bring it to you guys and you thick trick it out and turn it into a house. Yeah, and we can flip it in about a month. Okay. For you. And you started but you started as a building stuff out and renting them, right? Is that was that the beginning? The or? beginning was we were flipping vans and then we sort of your own vans, right? Our well, we were we flipping would buy and selling. Vans. Yeah. Okay. And then we also flipped one and kept it and rented it out. Mm -hmm. And we acquired a rental fleet. We had a fleet of seven for a while. We wow. were renting those out uh and it was doing really well, um, but we decided to put our efforts toward the conversion aspect because that's where our passion lied. Mm -hmm. uh, and rental business is kind of risky, you know, yeah, yeah. running out every time someone goes out, it's risky. And the mm -hmm. maintenance was a little bit more than we expected. But our passion lies in the conversions, the design, the building, the getting new people and getting people into their their dream homes right. for mm -hmm. real, you know, whether part time or full time, getting them in there. Mm -hmm. And you guys are in. Right now, your current van is a gigantic, dually high top passenger yep. transit. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are you guys are you guys doing a bunch of different vans or at, at SC Camper Vans? Or we is, do it, is um, there specific. We've we've templated for the Promaster Sprinter and Transit. Okay. Medium That's roof or three, high right? roof. Yeah. yeah. And any length. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. And you just sort of have like modular different designs for the different sizes and stuff. Yeah, we we have. Two standard designs and mostly based off of the bed differences, the platform bed and the dinette bed that turns into a bed. Mm -hmm. um, from there, you can do upgrades, but we pretty much stick with our standard builds, and that's how we can get the volume out at our um, inexpensive rates. Sure. Cool. That's great. Well, um, 
Let's talk about the Van Life app. Yeah. Um, this is the thing that's really sort of captured my imagination. And, uh, you know, we, there was a super poignant moment at the thing in New Kuyama where this woman with this deep southern accent was like sad. She was on the road and she was sad because she didn't have people. Mm -hmm. She was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm staying in Walmart parking lots next to these legitimately homeless people. I feel like I don't know where their story begins and mine ends yeah. and that sort of thing. And I don't have any friends and I thought this was going to be fun to travel around. And the thing that the, the Van Life app has that none of the other Yelp, iOverlander, etc. etc. have is the opportunity to connect with other people, right, who are in your like geographic location. Why did you guys start the Van Life app? Like, what's the? We started it because we were kind of in the same position as everyone else, and as that woman, like, we went on our two week summer vacation or two month summer vacation as teachers and after the first couple weeks we were like where are our friends where are people mm -hmm. and like we're lucky enough to be together but a lot of people are doing it solo eventually we found um a gathering mm -hmm. that um some people hosted and it totally changed our lives we found this community of people who were like going against the grain and pursuing their passions and what made them happy so um, after our trip, we came back home and started hosting these meetups because mm -hmm. we knew there were a ton of van lifers in San Diego that didn't really connect. So mm -hmm. we started hosting these meetups. The first one had like 50 vans, um, and then it's grown from there. But um, people would come up to us just like that woman and be like, I had no idea that this community existed. Right. Um, besides Instagram, mm -hmm. right? So, um, we decided to create a resource to help people, to help make van life more sustainable because we believe in it. We think that people pursuing their passions by limiting their overhead and, and becoming remote uh, and gaining more freedom should be a viable option. Mm -hmm. um, so we just want to make that more sustainable. Right. Yeah. So, um, and I asked just this question a few weeks ago, but, uh, the, the chief, what I see right now, at least from my perspective, just as a user, is what I see as the ch major challenge at the moment is that there aren't, there isn't a critical mass of people. Either A, populating the app with locations, because they're all crowdsourced, right? User-driven for the most part. And then, you know, in a, in a place where I know that there are that many people who are living in vans like San Diego County, when I zoom out and I see the whole county, I still only have like 11 or 12 people to connect with. Mm -hmm. And then we've, her family's from Rockford, Illinois, and we've been talking about going, because there's a huge, we're both theater people, there's a huge theater scene up over there. So we've been calculating on how do we get over to Chicago and visit her family, because her grandparents are getting really old. And, and I'm looking around there and there's like, it's just a desert mm -hmm. of, yeah. you know what I mean? All I see is pilot gas stations and no people so what's the what's the answer what are you guys gonna do mm. so we're actually this quarter we're starting a campaign obviously we just launched so <laughs> sure. um we've we've had more success than than we thought we were gonna have surprisingly mm -hmm. um we're still only two months old yeah. so um we're still populating what happened after launch so what differentiates us from other apps is that we're a public benefit corporation. Um, we're, we are for profit, but we're also for profit if we help our, our environment and our community. We wanna make sure we protect the spaces and the people that are using our app. Mm -hmm. So we're growing more slowly. Uh, with that being said, we are finding the right investors. It's just taking us a little bit of time mm -hmm. to help us build the app faster. Um, this this quarter what you can do and what we're going to start campaigning is um get on the app use it add your locations find people on there um the two-week free trial we've we found like a few bugs with the app not bugs but like for instance there are a lot more people in san diego who have the app that mm -hmm. don't have their location on mm -hmm. so and it's automatically off. Mm -hmm. So, like, that's one of the reasons you can't find people. You could switch it to where it's an opt-out thing, right? Yeah. 
you can switch it to so it starts as off because right. privacy is important right and you sure. have to manually switch it on right. um, so that's one of the reasons you can't find people have you around. talked about flipping that though to switching it to where it's an opt-out instead of an opt-in sort of thing <sighs> Yes, but also we want to make sure that, that everybody's safe. Yeah, yeah, um, that's important. So when Snapchat did that, I was like, no, I don't want people to know where I am on my <laughs> yeah. Snapchat. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. Well, one thing that's cool about the van life app is that it tells you the approximate distance of somebody from you, but it doesn't tell you where they are. Right? Mm -hmm. um, cool. Okay, when you talk about sustainability of of van life. Um, what do you mean? Mm. That's a good question because we talk about this with our, within our team quite a bit. Uh -huh. um, we mean sustainability in, in two different ways. Number one, sustainability as far as our environment is concerned. Like making sure we protect the places that we call home, that we clean up after ourselves, or that we're teaching people how to um, limit their effect on the environment. Um, protect our spaces... Uh, politically as well because mm -hmm. we know we're losing public lands um, make it sustainable by changing the political landscape around van life we know that we're losing our rights to pursue this sort of lifestyle and also make it sustainable by connecting you to the people and the resources that you need to have a good life right. like we know um, research as a communication scholar I know that the majority of long-term research looking at like overall well-being says that your social support is the number one factor in how long and well you live. Mm -hmm. We have an entire community of people who get up and leave mm -hmm. their social support. So how do we make van life more sustainable in a way that makes people's lives better? Mm -hmm. um, and that is connecting them to people. Yeah. So, um, people may or may not know, but, uh, a month and a half ago, um, or two months ago, the city of San, San Diego um, sort of rejiggered its uh, vehicular habitation prohibition ordinance to try to pass constitutional muster because a previous uh, federal judge judge's preliminary decision said that the current habitation ordinance was uh, too vague, uh, unconstitutionally vague. And so they're trying to make it pass muster so that they can continue or recontinue to prohibit people from uh, living in vans, sleeping in RVs, and that sort of thing. Um, and I, I think that's what you're talking about in terms of us losing our rights and mm -hmm. that sort of thing. Uh, one of the things I told you earlier is that the, um, I think that this emboldened the San Diego Sheriff's Department, who provides um, policing services to some of the cities that don't have their own police departments. Mm -hmm. It emboldened them to start... Uh, enforcing these habitation prohibitions that have not been fixed or even attempted to be fixed mm -hmm. yet that weren't being um, that weren't being enforced before and my buddy Anthony he got a ticket and he was like we should start a movement <laughs> and I was like yes you're right there are a bunch of us but there's this problem right and that is that this is a very unorthodox or at least not mainstream sort of decision for people to make mm -hmm. uh, that conventional wisdom goes against. And then in the same vein as what you just said, you're dealing with a community of people who are doing this so that they're not bound by the constraints of t typical American life, mm -hmm. right? And so it's hard to organize the people who decided to not be organizable, <laughs> yeah. right? Um, so wh what are we going to do? Mm. How do you... How do you change the minds of the people who don't know and have never even experimented with this? <laughs> it's an impossible yeah. to answer question. I, I think there's different Let's... ways, and you and I have talked about this quite a bit, mm -hmm. um, and people have different views on like how extreme we need to be. But the number one problem, I think, is that people don't understand who we are and why we're doing this. Mm -hmm. um, like, I own two businesses in San Diego. I live in my van part-time. Most people would look at me and say, like, you're living my dream. However, the city of San Diego is saying, what I'm doing is homeless. Right. I'm, I'm homeless, and I should be criminalized for that. Mm -hmm. um, so, 
I think we have this huge discrepancy in like what van life is or what RV life or car life or whatever you want to call it is and what other people think it is. Mm -hmm. um, so we have that one thing there. Also, we there is a lot of money in our movement. Like we have camper van companies everywhere They're popping up charging all over the place. 60,000, 100, 150,000 for a conversion, right? There's a lot of money in this movement um, that isn't being utilized. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that unfortunately it's probably gonna get to the place where it's too late or like it's reactive again, but we need to form a coalition. Like me and you going to this, the city council meeting doesn't do anything, mm -hmm. right? We need representation there. We need people to be lobbying for our rights. And the only way to do that is to form like a coalition and move forward that way as a, as a, as one voice, as a movement. Mm -hmm. um, but unfortunately the, no one's really stepped up and done it. Um, mm -hmm. But I think it's going to happen. <laughs> it's just probably going to take more time. Yeah. More tickets. <laughs> <sighs> well, and the fucking crazy thing about that is, you know, we were talking about this earlier too, is that like, uh, I am not optimistic about the reason that the posted speed limit and the enforced speed limit are so disparate from one another, mm. right? I think that one of the reasons that the police, this is me speculating, but I think I have a pretty good wealth of uh, history to back me up. One of the reasons that the police don't enforce the speed limit until nine miles, uh, 10 miles an hour after the speed limit, mm -hmm. and I've had multiple cops tell me that this is the case, hmm. except in speed traps, right? What they do is they don't pull you over until you're going 10 or usually even 15 miles an hour of the speed limit. What does that do? It creates a situation where everybody is always breaking the law and then they can fuck with whoever they need to. Mm. And it's like, oh, there's a pretty girl I want to talk to or wonder what that brown person is up to, you know? And I feel like this vehicular habitation prohibition all over the, um, in pretty much all of the communities where it's happening is, is being, Creating a situation where you can always require um, an engagement with the police. Mm. And there's mm. not privacy anymore for the what? people that the police want to target. Um, and the people who are, you know, driving a Mercedes or a nice transit and n not, like, aren't actually down on their luck or less likely to get messed with. Whereas it gives the, the authorities an opportunity to check out what's going on anytime that they want to with everybody else, right? Mm -hmm. And those tickets, the thing that's crazy about those tickets is that I actually know a guy in Encinitas who's like probably a vet. I'm pretty sure he's sober. He's been living in a van because he needs to. And it's been impounded for a few months. And now, God, it's probably, his tickets are probably as high as... Uh, as, as the value of the van. So he's never getting that fucking thing out. And he's sleeping on a, he's sleeping on a uh, park bench, you know? And everybody, it's, a, it's also the local dog park. Everybody loves this guy. The local neighbors and shit bring him lunch and stuff. But it's like, it created a situation where like he got a couple of tickets and then got impounded. And now, there we go, man. I don't, I, I don't know who this coalition of of folks is though. I guess that's my other question is like, because there are tons of people in Encinitas, rich ass people in Encinitas who have camper vans that they don't sleep in and they park them on the street. Yeah. They're doing the same thing that I am, except I'm making dinner and sleeping in the thing. So I'm making a higher use of that public space, mm -hmm. but they still don't want me sleeping out in front of their house. Yeah. Even though they're serving their pro private property on public real estate. And like any coalition, right? Like you have companies that decide to be part of this organization so right. they donate to it uh -huh. and this organization lobbies on the behalf of the, the movement right mm -hmm. um so just like any other um, lobbyist group or anything like that it, you need money and you need people to have a reason to give money mm -hmm. <sighs> is that something that the that the van life app could potentially eventually start to help facilitate yeah we will okay um we're gonna get to once we're 
on our feet and like the app is is really good like what it needs mm -hmm. to be um right now people like you are helping us get there right because mm -hmm. we need people to help us build it give us feedback there are still locations on the app like we get hundreds of locations added all the time um and i've found locations on the app that that weren't on any other app because i compare right mm -hmm. um and like it's still useful yeah there it's glitchy sometimes but mm -hmm. it's still like a good app and mm -hmm. it's the only app that actually protects the places that we call home and actually wants to protect our movement so we need people like you to use it um and when we do get to the place where we have enough money we're gonna have full-time a full-time like lobbyist lawyer um i think the first thing we want is a lawyer to be able to um tell us what the city uh, rules are or the city codes are for each for each location yeah. oh that'd be so um, cool so man. that we have that and then we'll move toward really once we have the money to hire more people to be able to organize something like mm -hmm. this then we can be a powerful um, movement of change yeah like, oh I hadn't even thought about that yet but like that's something that the app should totally be populated with is here's the local ordinance here are the two local, because in Encinitas we have a, an anti-camping ordinance and we also have um, a no overnight RV parking ordinance. And RVs, they tried to sort of rope in conversion vans mm. too. And so we have two separate ordinances that could potentially apply to the same sort of thing. And everybody got ticketed under the RV ordinance. But yeah, distilling down and making those local ordinances make sense for the people who are using the app and doing it by municipality would be major. <coughs> That'd be super cool so that you know what you're walking into. Yeah. And then, you know, like like you were saying earlier, is that, like, a lot of the people who have been living in vans in San Diego since before the moratorium of ticketing, they already know where to stay. And so they can hide out and they're not there. They're not being seen or messed with or anything. But yeah. if you're driving through from Alabama or Canada or Florida or something, you get ticketed. A, you got to move on, so you're probably not going to be around for your court day. But B, you don't know how to, where to go to fight the ticket or who to get to fight the ticket for you. And mm. that sort of knowledge base would be really useful. And especially because, you know, we're both big outdoor enthusiasts, but we like staying in cities too. Yeah. You know, and those are the places that are the most problematic, I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Um, oh, this is another thing I wanted to talk about. It's like, when we, when you get into these heated debates, like the hearing that we were at a couple of months ago, um, the, the thing that breaks my heart is that I've yet to hear a rational argument as to why it should be illegal to do something totally legal just because you're doing it in a perfectly legally parked automobile, right? The, the, and the only, the only answer the thing that everybody says is i don't want somebody sleeping who i don't know sleeping out in front of my house or whatever um which isn't rational to me either because i can rent the apartment next to your place and you don't know me and i go and live over there <laughs> um but wait fuck where was i going <laughs> there's no rational reason yeah oh one of the things so you know there's this dichotomy right between us who all have jobs and choose to live part-time or full-time or whatever in a vehicle. Um, and then there are people who are said to need to live in a vehicle, have to live in a vehicle, mm. right? And the lawsuit, the successful, partially successful lawsuit that's going to continue um, as a result of this prohibition uh, is being fought purely on behalf of disabled homeless people who have to live in vehicles. And I'm super interested in the spectrum because you told me that one of the reasons that you got the van instead of a bigger apartment is because you can move it around and it costs less than getting the bigger apartment. Mm -hmm. So whether you're um, a destitute disabled person or a person with a job, the overhead dynamic still plays into the, into the decision to live in a van most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. um, so I'm curious, I'm so terrified of claiming to have solidarity with those people, right? Because I don't identify as homeless. I never have, I'm more, I'm employed and I'm even more employable. 
Um, but I guess I'm interested in what you guys think is wh where on the spectrum are we? Does that make sense? I think the spectrum that if the spectrum is defined by um, popular discourse, particularly in these contexts of city council and, and laws, we're not on the spectrum. Mm -hmm. I don't think we're part of the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, all around the United States and in Canada, there has been for decades, a since the 80s, a war on homelessness. Right. So people see homelessness as a personal failure mm -hmm. as an individual weakness or or failure right mm -hmm. and in america we don't want to see it especially in our pretty cities mm -hmm. like we don't want to see homelessness mm -hmm. so i think that our um disgust uh and i say our as in like overall society. right yeah, yeah, yeah. society's <clears throat> disgust of homelessness is uh, affects us as a movement, um, I think we're very different in that when you when there's agency behind your choice, it puts you in a different category than if you didn't have a choice. Right. right? Um, so it's it's a difficult thing because I am an advocate for people who are houseless, but I am also affected by the laws that are targeted towards them mm. right so i have to separate myself but that doesn't mean i i don't have to not care or i don't mm -hmm. i don't care um i don't know it's an interesting thing because i think if the way that i view it is if an argument about and we've seen this in san diego for so long san diego is trying to cure homelessness or deal with homelessness through criminalization mm -hmm. Um, so if stories of homelessness and homeless vets and mental illness and all that doesn't get to their decision making, like what will get to it? Right. And I, I, you and I talked about this at the city council meeting. I decided to go for, and I was the only one who actually approached it from a different angle. Mm -hmm. And that was like, I own two businesses. I'm successful. I have a van. That I live in part time, and part of the reason I was able to be so successful is because I cho chose to live in a van, mm -hmm. right? So that actually got to them. Like, if you weren't there afterwards, but the the city council members, my point about an emergency ordinance was the only one that got to them. So mm -hmm. they were listening to me because I came from a place of privilege, mm -hmm. which is different from most other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I mean, this is a roundabout way. Of saying, I think we're different. Um, I think we can't be fighting. We can be fighting against the same thing, but not for the same reason. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so we talked about sustainability in terms of um, van life being sustainable personally and individually for the people doing it. And then promoting an ethic of sustainability uh, in terms of leave no trace and and your impact on the places that you're visiting and stuff um, do you think that van life is sustainable from a cultural perspective like even suppose suppose we could convince people that we're not going to shit in their front yards or whatever they're thinking these prospective problems are going to be right and Everybody was like, oh, a public parking space is just a public parking space. And anybody who's doing it and isn't doing something illegal is fine in it. Um, e even if we could get there, I wonder if fan life is, is a systemic solution to anything apart from somebody's individual desire for freedom or wanderlust or whatever it is. Um, and then if it's like long-term sustainable to be living in public space mm. you know that's a really good thing to think about just like off the top of my head and it's something that I'm gonna have to think about a lot more but I don't think living in public space is a s for more people to do it 
especially in urban cities, is a sustainable alternative way of life. What I do think is going to happen is there's going to be more movement toward co-living and uh, co-living spaces and um, like the reason the van life actually started was because I wanted to have a network of like KOAs but for van lifers right, right. so for like um, millennial co-living space where you can just pull up your van mm -hmm. and have like a kitchen and like all the things you need in your community right so I think we already have the infrastructure for those in campsites but campsites just need to be tweaked a little bit we have T hundreds of thousands of campsites in the United States like there is a way for van life to be sustainable and there's a way to limit living in urban places I don't know it's a huge it's, it, that's a huge conversation to yeah, have it's a giant can of worms yeah I I that, the first thought I had was uh, like as long as it's the more financially feasible option to being able to move and travel then yeah it'll keep growing until we have more options for affordable housing and uh, options for people who can afford an apartment but also can afford to travel when they want to travel and transportation options transportation you know, we were, options we were yeah, talking about sure. this and like you know as i'm a trans transportation activist and yesterday we were talking about this Colette needed to come I'm working remotely right now Colette needed to come down to San Diego for this directing gig that she has and she was like I really want to take the train but it costs more than driving my Prius mm -hmm. down and back it's uh, yeah. way more expensive uh, why the fuck would I take the train <laughs> low on money I just put gas in my tank and it it's like six bucks each way on the train. I don't know what the day pass costs, mm -hmm. but it's that's, you know, for two days of taking the train, that's like half a tank of gas. And in a Prius, it only takes like a six of a tank of gas to go take two trips to San Diego. Wow. Like, you know, I get 45 miles an hour and this just makes more sense. And I hate that. So I used mm -hmm. to live in Manhattan and I lived in England and. And the fact that you could take the train everywhere and it was the most affordable option was awesome. Mm -hmm. And that's just it's a simple... It's not affordable. Mm -hmm. It's just a simple... That's a simple microcosmic example, right, of a purely sure. nothing but... Th that problem is nothing but transportation. It has nothing to do mm -hmm. with a van. Yeah. But it was like, oh, I don't need to be in Encinitas for the next two days. We'll just drive the van down. and Because she had to come tomorrow, too. And so that had been you know, $24 or whatever for her to get to work and back twice. Mm -hmm. Or we could take She's the van down and we're just like, you know, right here the whole time. And it's more in gas than the Prius would be, but yeah. we're I together would, and we're here. I'd love to get rid of my car, um, but with the transportation system that we have when it comes to my theater jobs, which are all over San Diego, I, I can't because if I'm done at, I'm working in Old Town and I'm done at 11 p.m., I can't get home. Yeah. And, and that's, I, that frustrates me. Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, mm. it's difficult. Well, and, I mean, from a, from a perspective of, of just the, the amount of free parking that we have, it's like, this is a market-driven solution to there being tons of free parking for automobiles and not enough affordable housing for people. And people were like, oh, wait a minute. I well, you know, the there. church, the city mm. won't even let the church churches have affordable housing because in the city of san diego you have to have a minimum number of parking spaces, parking spaces. per year. and and like what a lot of people in the churches are going out four times a day to see how many parking spaces are actually taken mm -hmm. um the only time it's ever full is for an hour yeah. on one day a week right we but they're forced that. to have that those spaces and they're arguing like please let me create more like how uh, like homeless housing yeah, yeah let me right? build housing yeah. next to my in the parking <laughs> lot and the city's like we need more data the city's like there's no room in the inn the city says <laughs> no. we need more data yeah they it's don't need data to it's pass church. no baby i need that <laughs> oh i'll give it back to you sir. he's doing it on my lap <laughs> sorry that's where i put it there i'm doing mm -hmm. it on my lap too <laughs> we need data in terms of how much of the what the impact will be. Parking is, is actually taken. But we don't need data when it comes to uh, an sure. emergency 
like <laughs> the ordinance. Don't curse my fucking podcast. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> churches are barely used during the week. It's we like were the specifically is, talking we were like, about churches I was like yesterday. Thought, thinking, I was like up in the middle of the night, and I was like, churches. They have so much parking. This is ridiculous. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah, it's crazy. I think that's insane. Mm. And the Ralphs should be allowed to use their lots to do whatever the fuck they want. All the Ralphs outside of and Vons and everything outside of the city core in San Diego. Um, I was talking to a planner at a um, co-work meetup thing a week and a half ago, and the general footprint is 25% building and 75% just a crater of flat black top, you know? And that's, that's the reason that I kind of don't want, at least in urban environments, I don't want van life to be a, not from an ecological perspective, right? But for a, from a like full-time van living in a city, sustain, I don't want it to be sustainable because I want, I want apartments on the, on those parking spaces instead of. Mm. But in the meantime, imagine if they were able to allow those parking lots at night when the business was closed to be camping for people in cars or whatever and you have you can stay f there from this time and by this time you gotta leave yeah yep. like the opposite that instead of no SD parking from vans business 10 a.m to <laughs> <laughs> honestly the like research shows when people buy a, an rv or something like this they continue to buy throughout their life uh -huh. they will have one for the rest of their lives uh -huh. mm, van life is not going anywhere oh no like we have to make it a sustainable we have to come up with a sustainable solution mm -hmm. and just outlawing it isn't it right we have to yeah. come up with a way a system of making it all right mm -hmm. that's just period in san diego people can't afford to live here if in san diego i think it's something like uh, what are the numbers 28 percent of people in san diego spend more than 50 percent of their in gross income on rent oh for sure I have been for basically my entire adult life. Fifty percent. That mm -hmm. means you can't afford food, gas. Mm -hmm. You can't afford your basic necessities, let alone health care, if right. your company yeah. doesn't provide it for you. Mm -hmm. um, and and we're saying like, you can't live in a van. Mm -hmm. Well, enjoying the city you're living in, you yeah. can't even do. So I I think that as long. And even if there was affordable housing guaranteed, it will not be affordable in a decade. Mm -hmm. sure. So things change so much that we can't rely on one system to have one answer. We have to have options, and van life is an option. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm having a good time. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I get passionate. Like, yeah, no, I no, I please, appreciate your passion, talking. and and you're the person that I always look forward to like cornering at these things because Thanks. I feel like you and I have. Uh, a little bit different perspective, but basically the same in game in mind. Mm -hmm. um, what else is there, bud? I don't know. Lacey, how you doing over there? Doing pretty She's good. hanging out. She's I hanging always out listening just to take over her <laughs> speaking. <laughs> no, it's this. This is where you know you do really well with gathering the data and knowing how to make solutions, and having this debate and this talk it only fuels your passion to make things better. And I think the app is the it's a really good way to do it. It's a really good tool. I'm super excited for it. I'm stoked about it. I'm on there every day, even though I'm in the same place all the time and <laughs> no. I don't need it, you know? I've and seen you. I Whenever saw I you. get water, I push it, you know? <laughs> Hell yeah. Put my stuff on. I saw you uh, a mile away and I was like, he's around here somewhere. He's getting here. <laughs> <laughs> we had to he's find that close. Vaughn's up the hill. Up, what is that street? J it J J J was J J J J something. Yeah. We were in Encinitas when I pulled it. I pulled it up. Oh, yeah. Then. Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. It's just like, unlimited free parking and it's like they should be charging for this but it, as long as they're not <laughs> that's where my van's at during the day because there's a sink for me to there's my koa there's a sink for uh, me to do my dishes there's a restroom there's a good surf spot and uh, all of my homies like we don't sleep near each other anymore because we got uh cracked down on mm -hmm. everybody gravitates we never to saw space. anybody when we slept near them anyway yeah well and that's one of the everybody wonderful keeps things to themselves and at night when it's time for bed and all of our friends who got tickets they, uh, Super quiet. they all have jobs in Encinitas, and none of the jobs pay enough for them to live any closer than San Marcos if they were living in a house. 
because they make 15 bucks an hour. And a studio apartment in Encinitas within walking distance of all those downtown neighborhoods is two grand, man. 1500 two grand. And I, so I couldn't afford to work to live in Encinitas and I even though I work full time and uh, at the job I'm at and it's dope though. Uh, we have like a really a really solid community of real respectful, clever, yeah. calm people. You yeah. know. They like drinking beer and hanging out together, but like there's no bad shit going on at all with that crowd. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, oh, here's a question I wanted to ask you guys that is a complete change of gears. Mm. Why the transit? We kind of mm. got like our, we got our eyes out right now for a bigger van and yeah. the transit is where we keep coming back to. I love the transit. Yeah? I think it's a very comfortable drive. Okay. I, it's the tallest one. That's uh -huh. nice. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's harder to build out because it has a couple curves this way and this way. So it's... Okay. Harder than, than the, the Sprinter. <laughs> <It's exactly laughs> yeah. A little harder than the Sprinter, but really? okay. um, ProMaster would be the easiest to build out. Because it's just it's basically a little, basically bit, a little brick. bit more square. <laughs> yeah. But you do have the bumps. Like the ProMaster has these large bumps that come down, but you can build around them. Uh -huh. um, so that's the only difficulty. But I love the Transit. I think it's a comfortable drive. Ford is a good company. We, we decided on the Transit at first because we didn't know how to fix a car. We knew, mm -hmm. like, if we we're going to be on the road, and we needed to get the car fixed. We wanted to be able to take it to a regular mechanic and not right. have to pay Mercedes pricing. Um, That's why I wouldn't get a Mercedes. But um, ProMaster is good too. Yeah. We convert a lot of ProMasters and Transit. Uh -huh. The ProMaster, we have a, we've traveled for a while, like a couple months in a ProMaster. Mm -hmm. Hurts my back. Hurts my back too. So really? personally, I don't like the ProMaster, but some people love it. What hurts your back? The, like the, the seats? seats? Yeah, sitting huh. for so long. Oh, in, interesting. Like the way the seats are. issue for some reason. Uh -huh. It flares up when I drive the huh. ProMaster or sit in the ProMaster. You want a beer? Sure. Yeah. Um, Thank I you. had no idea about that. You guys just sold just a ProMaster, right? One yeah. Of your, one of your older vehicles? Yeah. yeah. It's a 2018. Yeah, you said first van, so how many vans have you had? Just Not including the whole fleet, just your personal No, just like vans. your personal van. Well, we started off with Flipper. Um, that was our first van uh, two years ago? Yep. Yeah, and then we put... That, that was an, part of our rental shit? fleet. And we wanted to build out a van with SD camper vans to sh have it be a show vehicle as well, so people can see what we do. Yeah. So we ended up getting another van, and now our first van is actually our sales rep's mobile office. Oh, you oh, said okay. mobile office earlier, and I was like, I wonder what that means. I was means. like, that yeah, sounds so cool. Flipper is now Desiree's mobile office, and she can go to the beaches and the rock climbing gyms and, and show off. Oh, you know, yeah. yeah. Do. So she does her calls and all her work. But she also van. has a piece of marketing material yeah. Yeah. strapped to that her butt worked, while she's yeah. doing it, right? Yeah. With the doors open. And it's like, yep. oh, can I talk to you about and this? She's yeah. great. It's you so nice. She scored on a job. Like, that's a pretty <laughs> pretty fat bonus to me. That sounds good. Yeah, she loves it. Job. It looks really, really cool. Is she staying in it? Or is no, it just an office? Just an office. Well, okay. she travels in it sometimes. She travels, yeah. 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 She travels in it. Like, over the weekend, she'll go to places. Yeah. She's always in mobile advertisement, so that's cool. That's super cool. And you were telling me... You're planning on scaling the business up eventually, right? Like yeah. big time. Right now. Yeah. What's what's the what's the program on that? How's so the, we're um, <laughs> our original <laughs> so our original what? mission with SD camper vans was to make it more affordable for people. Yeah. We realized that doing like hands-on conversions, we like we were we were actually paying uh -huh. for people to have cheap vans uh -huh. at the prices that we started with. So we want to get back to that eventually. Yeah. Um, and we're still cheaper than most people. Yeah. Uh, almost all other companies, especially for our quality. Like uh -huh. our quality yeah. is far beyond um, what other people offer. And we have a niche too. It's a very home feel. Uh -huh. And a lot of these, uh, when most of the camper and conversion companies, you know, they look like a built out limo or something right. manufactured, which is, is really cool. It's like an adventure mobile, but our niche is home, home feel. Butcher block countertops. Backsplash, yeah. shiplap ceiling, and then we do that for a pretty affordable price. But the scaling that you're referring to is to make sure that we can get more people in houses, in homes on wheels, as we want to hit the hit the DIY market. Mm -hmm. So many people want to build out their own van, yeah. you know? But when you go to Home Depot 20 times in a row, and you get the wrong thing, and then you get, you have to write this tool, and then you don't really want the tool, and um, 
Sounds like you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and it takes months to build out and hours of research on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So we want to be able to build one video and, and ship a kit and have people be able to okay. make their own make their own band. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. I have uh I, when I was shopping around for which van to get, because I, I decided I wanted to get a small van to begin with, because I expected hating living. I expected to hate living in it. Mm. Um, and now I wish I got a bigger van, because I love it. But uh, <laughs> there, are a couple of, there are a couple of companies that do, like, very rudimentary kits with, like, none of the solar or conversion beds, or it's just, like, basically boxes and some mattresses mm -hmm. or whatever. But you guys are talking about, like, a full-blown, full-on... You can do this, but... It's going to take a little bit of skill. Uh -huh. We've been working on it, but on the designs for about a year. Yeah. But with a, but if you're going to be building your own van anyway, and you want it to look nice, you're going to be doing... It's, that's the kind of market that we're going to mm -hmm. that we Sure, hit. sure. The people that want to build it themselves want it to look really nice mm -hmm. and want to feel proud of it. And then we'll have certified builders. Mm -hmm. um, van lifers, because van lifers need gigs. Yeah. Right? So you get your certification to be an SD camper van builder. And then you can you can help. Hey, this person's you know. in your area. Right. I'll help you come build right. that kit. Or that you got some you don't have anybody in Ohio and I feel like going to Ohio, so I'll take my van over yeah. there and help them help them do the thing. That's yeah. cool. So we can send send travelers that want to travel for different gigs, different places yeah. or mm -hmm. If they happen to be in the location. I like that. It's That's creative. Cool. It's cool. Like, both That's of our cool. businesses are just mission-driven. Like, we want to make it more accessible and more sustainable all uh -huh. around. Right? So, um, we're not just in it to get rich. We're in it to, like, solve problems right. that are real for, sure. for a community that we love. Mm -hmm. So, it's cool to know that this is what we're doing with our life. Yeah. It's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. It is. Literally, we have to like remind ourselves. <laughs> like, one day I feel on top of the world and like, this business is the best. And the next day I'm just like, oh, how are we going to get through September? And then I'm like, oh my, it's just like this. Yeah. And it's so fun when it's here. Mm -hmm. And it's even fun when it's here because you're like, I, I remember when I was here, like, let's get it back. And so you, it's like a roller coaster of crazy. Some days you want to quit, never ever want to go into a van again. And some days you just want to go get in the van and take off and <laughs> be done and then other days you want to just focus on the business building and it's really fun because you know what you're doing to impact people that story sounds pretty much exactly parallel with my own self-confidence issues yeah <laughs> so, <laughs> like, maybe it's not the business <laughs> yeah. we're all alike <laughs> yeah right i'm curious how much like your personal van did the vans you build out look like is it a similar format yeah cool yeah. Yeah, it's figured out. It's basically in. a show vehicle. Yeah, okay, what sure. We do. That but makes sense. It was built seven months ago, so I always have to say, like, the quality significantly improved. Sure, better. sure. Because mm. my dad this and Giselle ours. came in with their cabinet making and design yeah. skills, and we've had, now yeah. we've had, and you know, Alan with his electrical skills, and it just keeps getting better and better, and yeah, so. Right. Now we just have to sell that van and get another van built by SD Camper Vans to uh -huh. show the quality. Yeah. yeah. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it keeps you moving, gives you something. When you have something you're passionate about, it's more enjoyable work, right? Even though it's hard. Sure. Oh, yeah. It keeps, it keeps you going. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm a learner at heart. Sure. So everything that I do is all about learning. Mm -hmm. Doing it better and better. Can I help you? Your bone did not last long enough today. Yeah. Oh, no. You're right. right. You bro. <laughs> yeah, no, no. Uh, what, what do you, who do you have working at what the place work? now? We have a team of seven. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, and they're all full time. Yeah. Wow, seven people are. You said seven vans in eight weeks. Right now we're kind of on crunch time, and we're building about seven and a half vans in seven weeks. Oh my god. Um, and we're almost through that, Damn. and then we're gonna be moving toward uh, a consistent rhythm of three vans four weeks. Okay. Which is much better than calm it down to do a little right bit. Yeah. Well, we were trying to do this because we kind of got a little. We, were, we got a little backlog because we were working on our designs. Mm -hmm. We were working on bettering our product. And with all of that, it takes more time than you ever imagine. And so vans got kind of backlogged. Yeah. So we designated this catch up time. Um, we're almost through it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You get anybody from out of state, or is it all people yeah. that are. Oh, cool. Actually, people oh, wow. see our prices and so go, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so they drive it in, fly home, and then fly back pick it up yeah. and take it make it as a road trip if it's experience. worth it it's yeah, worth yeah. it yeah very cool if you can 
If you can schedule that alongside a a decent like travel that. block, I imagine that would be yeah. it. Plus, like, imagine you get your brand new van and you have to drive it across country. Yes! Like Dang, that looks yeah. so yeah. bad. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah. yeah, for sure. Yeah, I bet you guys, when you do deliver vans, I'll bet people are really excited. Oh, yeah, yeah it's a whole revealing day. The, everyone Cute. comes out and put a big red bow on it. And, yeah. oh. and we do a whole revealing party. Like, close your eyes. Lori gets super into that. Very That's cool. so cute. <laughs> We yeah. love it. I love, we love that. It. And we explain everything all that, that day to the customer and then they drive home. Like how to work excited. the stuff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you gotta give yeah. them a tour. How to do the sure. water. And... This is everything. This is the electrical uh -huh. system. This is how you work it. That's one thing that I worry about um, in terms of if I were to try to sell this fan. Mm. Is that like because I did spend 200 hours on YouTube last summer and I put every mm -hmm. brad and every screw in every part of everything yeah. if something goes weird i know how to fix it right but the poor bastard that bought <laughs> this from me if i left it set up i before i sell it i'm gonna rebuild everything is my intention because i didn't even have access to a um to a table saw so nothing's even barely square right i built the whole thing with a with their uh <gasps> circular <laughs> saw and a jigsaw this yeah. guy his friend helped him yeah my buddy my buddy builds uh, builds custom furniture in LA, and so, so you have to that, give Aaron some credit. that shelf is perfect. And then there's like an inset cabinet here that's really good. But everything <laughs> yeah. else is just like perfectly functional, but a little bit janky. And I worry about that. Like if I if I sell it to somebody as it is currently configured, I'm gonna have to like be on the phone with that person mm. helping them whenever something goes weird give a big know? tutorial and then say bye yeah, see ya <laughs> sold <laughs> as is yeah, good luck fucker <laughs> good I, luck. Expect, <laughs> I expect you should buy a, a giant Put post it's all over this is where you pull the panel back yeah, to reach this wire up. comes with a huge free fire extinguisher <laughs> <laughs> A lot of the hard stuff is, you know, the the sink runs fine and and all the solar is perfect. Oh, we everything's haven't had any problems. Everything's it's perfect just, except for the aesthetics. The really, the panel is like, just yeah, yeah. I just got this little guy right here. <laughs> Last year on his Yay. birthday, his birthday. What are you doing? What was that? <laughs> Super like, stoked. Last year on Martin's birthday, beginning of August, so you'd had the van for almost a month, and I'm like, what do you want to do for your birthday? And he's like, I want to work on the van. Yes. <laughs> I, like, I turned into okay. a fucking maniac. So yeah, like, that was her when we built our first van. We got, I was like, this, oh, again, I'm tired, you uh -huh. know? She loved it. I stayed and, up until one o'clock in the morning. Every every night, as soon as I felt like I couldn't, I was had too much like beer six. in me, or I was too tired to reliably make, like, good decisions about where to cut things or like not cut my thumb off i was like all right back to youtube i'm oh. learning some more you know? <laughs> what were you and saying uh ooh, i didn't even remember uh, <laughs> on his birthday though we he's, we worked on these panels and we like tr made these like cuts out of paper trying to like get them the right shape because they were super weird and awkward and it was just kind of a mess mm -hmm. it was really funny we spent a, the whole day and it was pretty much unproductive i think the ceiling was the only one that, that we got really done well. yeah when he was doing his van it was like it was his van it wasn't yeah. it wasn't my van and it, it was like I didn't see where like I didn't know that I was gonna be spending time in it or living in it with him now and I didn't know where I was part of the situation mm -hmm. so I just you know I let him do his thing and I helped him where I could like I you know I helped with all the upholstery and, and talked him through a lot of stuff but I think it would be fun on the next one I would I would definitely want to be more involved in all the the building and I would want to make all this I'm I this is really Poor. This is my first upholstery ever, great. and I didn't know I what I was doing. I think it's fucking great, bud. Yeah, the zippers than I'm I very do. proud of. The zippers look great. Like if you look behind uh -huh. me, you can see how good the zippers look. Yeah, but um, yeah, which is difficult. I think that's the one I have to fix. I have to fix one of them. It gets mm -hmm. the wood gets a uh, kind of snags it sometimes. Yeah. But then on oh, the next awesome. one, I want to make curtains and upholstery and like all uh -huh. kinds of like things out of fabric. Would be so fun. Yeah, having a, having a you van know. you can stand in is going to change your life. Yeah. yeah. For us, <laughs> the bigger deal is that when the bed comes out to here, it's the I usually space. sleep a little less than she does. Mm. And so I either want to stay up later or get up earlier. And there's nowhere for me to go. Mm. And you know, sometimes I gotta, it's the other way around. And I don't like gotta get out of van. I just laid there for like two <laughs> hours. I was like, oh, okay, I'm awake and I want to work, but like, I don't want to move. I don't yeah. want to go right now. So, and, do you guys sleep? Sideways, you have the, you have the uh, table bed thing, yeah. right? 
It, okay. We sleep whatever way we're leaning. So, like, yeah. you know, so, so if the van's leaning sure. this way, we'll put our head on this side. But sometimes we'll sleep the length way. Long way? Yeah, because yeah, we made a it's six, six foot. feet. So, yeah, you yeah. have oh, cool. the option. Yeah. But it's also five nine this way. Oh great! So we could sleep either way. Yeah, yeah, and spoons or whatever. Yeah. Um, yeah, we what do you? What's your mattress made of? <laughs> Just high high, high density, density foam. foam. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I want to see it. I haven't seen it. You yeah, haven't. Let's go. Let's go look at the van. Is that the one? Did we sit in yours? No, or it was, was Jess's. It Jess's. Okay, I thought no. it was Jess's. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to see your van after okay. we're done. Okay. I'm interested. Cool. Well, what else? And I haven't been in a transit yet. I think we've done a pretty good job, guys. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. is there Cheers. Anything else Thank you guys you. want to talk burning, about? Burning thoughts? Yeah. No. Okay. I think we're good. Yeah, okay. just like... Plug all your shit. Um, <laughs> uh, at SD Camper Vans is our Instagram. Or you can email us. Uh, you can email her called Desiree. She's the best. 619-787-9214. Ladies van. The ladies van is our personal at the ladies van, um, and then at the van life app. Yeah. Or download the app. If you have any feedback or questions, you can email Brienne at the van life app dot com. Right. Yeah. B r e a n n e. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you guys for sitting down with us. Appreciate your time. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you. Good stuff. <laughs> All right. Cheers. It's too fun. Let's go look at this giant whale of a van, dude. All right, guys. That was episode 17. It's always great to catch up with Bree and Lacey uh, when we're in the same place. They're wonderful people, and, and it was really good to have a conversation with them on the record. Uh, thanks for listening if you made it this far. I really appreciate you being here. Uh, give us a follow on the YouTube page and the Instagram page if you feel like it. Tell your friends about it uh, so that we can get some more people listening to this podcast. See you next week.